Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, all right. Okay, good morning everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, that you are joining here for this presentation about our initiative of sharing our primary data, of making it available online. Um, I will start with uh, explaining the rationale of why are we doing this? Why do we want to share our data? And I will also put this in uh, the context of recent developments in data sharing, which is a global, uh, which are, uh, it's happening in the global community. I will then continue with explaining what EFT's ambitions regarding data sharing are. And of course, I will end with explaining EFT's support to researchers in sharing our data. So I would like to highlight first the core values of science, which are academic quality and societal relevance. And these are also at the heart of all the work we do at, at EFD, because we aim to make high quality research that has an actual impact on local policy making. However, science is challenged by a couple of things. For example, the replication crisis. A couple of years ago, a group of researchers tried to replicate the results of a large amount of social sciences studies. But unfortunately, they failed to do so in um, a large part of the cases. Also, the public trust in science is being challenged. I found a study um, that was conducted worldwide that only 55% of people believed that climate change is caused by human activities versus 97% of scientific results that, that support this claim. And of course, there are also bad research practices that we need to try to avoid, such as p-hacking and fraud, but also data fabrication. And this is an example that I found uh, close to home in the Netherlands for a few years ago. Uh, it's a Dutch psychologist um, uh, who was also an environmentalist, and he made very bold claims. For example, he said that eating meat would lead to, to people be more selfish and egoistic and less social to others. So these are quite bold statements, and it appeared that none of it was true, at least it was not based on solid data, because he made up all his data sets. So this is a quite extreme example, but I think it shows why it's important that we share our research data. And this is because reli reliable research data are at the heart of credible research results. And that's why the open data movement calls out for more sharing of research data, um, to minimize these challenges that I just mentioned. Sharing data will improve the rep replicability of research results. It will increase transparency and also increase the scrutiny of research data. And all of this will lead to a better quality of research data and then indirectly also benefit the trustworthiness and the reputation of researchers and their work. But there are also other reasons why data sharing is important. One could argue that research and knowledge in general are to be considered public goods. There are even people that go as far as claiming that um, access to knowledge should be a basic human right. But besides this more ideological point of view, one could also argue that research data and research are public goods because of the funding. For example, in Sweden, more than 75 of research is funded by the government. And if you look at the average in Europe, almost 80% of economics research is publicly funded. And of course, when zooming into the, the research that is done at EFD, we get all our funding from public resources, from the government. That means basically that the work that we're doing, oh. is it back? Yeah. It's okay, thanks. So this means that the work that we're doing is paid by taxpayers' money. And that's why we feel the responsibility First, to be transparent about the work that we do, and also transparent about the research data. But also, we feel responsible to make best use of this money, and make sure that it can, the, the use value is increased, and it can be used by um, a lot of people, rather than ending up at people's personal laptops. The benefits of data sharing, they work on different levels. They have benefits for society as a whole. They increase transparency, they increase trust in research, um, they make better use of public funding. But there are also benefits for the research community. Um, besides transparency, it might avoid duplication of data collection, duplication of um, experiments, and it might make it easier to reuse the data. 
There are also benefits for individual researchers, such as an increase in citations, because the data can be cited just as any other research outputs. And also now a bit more about the global developments that are going on regarding data sharing. One can observe that there are more and more international organizations with open data policy, such as, such as the CGR Consortium and the World Bank. And data sharing is also driven by funders and journals. For example, the American Economic Review and PLOS One are journals that require data to be published in a repository to be accessible by everyone. And data sharing is also driven by governments. Here the UK is on the forefront, but also China has recently adopted um, a very ambitious data sharing policy. In the European Union, uh, the Horizon 2020, they now have a pilot project that they require for 30% of the funds that data should be shared. On the side of infrastructure, there is an increasing number of national and international data repositories all over the world. And it's important to, to note here that these are not single efforts, these are not isolated efforts. These repositories are more and more connected to each other. They develop together international standards so that data can be easily shared and transferred between repositories that, for example, metadata and search words have the same meaning all over the world. And there are also certifications like, for example, the Core, uh, core Trust Seal that will guarantee the researcher that your data will be stored in a safe and secure way. So what I'm wondering here, why aren't all of you already sharing your data if there are so many benefits? Well, I mentioned that research data can be considered as a public good, but of course at the same time it has also some private good characteristics when it comes to individual researchers and the use of the data for them. And I know that you're all very hardworking researchers and you're trying to contribute to the common good, try to do good research and um, make an actual impact. But at the same time, you have to do this in often a very competitive environment. And the last thing that you want is someone else taking your idea, idea uh, using your data and publishing the results before you have the chance to do so. Because then all your hard work has no benefits for yourself. And we don't want that. But even if after a considerable time has passed, um, data sharing is often not on the priority list of researchers. And why is that? Well, first of all, of course, it takes a lot of time. And you might have other important things to do. It can also be that in your university or institute there is no data sharing culture. Why would you be the first one to do? And also, often there is very little awareness of why to share data and how to share your data. There can also be unclarity about who owns the data. Is this the researcher, the research institute? Um, does the funder have any claims? But you can also get your data from another organization and maybe you're not allowed to share this. And many researchers are also concerned about the protection of privacy of their respondents, which is also a very important issue. And of course, there's also limited facilitation to take away these challenges I just mentioned. And we at EFD, we're very aware of these challenges. And in our efforts to share the data, we also aim to, to lower the barriers and to take away part of these challenges. So how does EFD want to contribute to these developments? Well, first of all, we integrated our data management goal into the EFD strategy, which is to establish a data management culture in the EFD network that enhances the quality, the availability, and effective use of research data. We also have formulated six specific objectives that we hope to reach by the end of 2022. Um, first of all, we want to share our data in a well-managed infrastructure. We also want to create an incentive system for researchers to, to share their data with us. We also want our data management practices to be aligned with international standards. We don't operate in isolation. Um, we are establishing also a data management support function for the network for, uh, to provide advice and support to researchers in data management. Also, we collaborate with established repositories to improve the quality of our work and enhance learning. And we want to promote the reuse of research data, for example, by making it using, um, by using it in our academic programs. 
I want to tell now a little bit about the Swedish context, because EFT, as you know, is part of a Swedish university. And in Sweden, we're also moving towards more publishing research results, open access, which is, uh, which is advised to the governments by the Swedish Science Council. And Sweden is also moving towards um, publishing the data open access. But of course, you cannot ask from researchers and universities to publish the data without facilitation. The, that there needs to be a proper infrastructure in place. And to facilitate this, they gave a national mandate to the Swedish Net National Data Service, SND, which is our project partner. And they're certified as a trusted digital repository. And they got a national mandate to actually roll out a countrywide program to develop data access units at all 27 Swedish universities. Um, I think this picture kind of shows how the different data access units at the universities are connected to EFD. Um, the different parts represent the universities. There will be local storage of data at each university. They provide first contact points and researcher supports to the researchers. Also, they perform a quality check of the data. Everything comes, comes together at SND. They're basically the spider in the web of this whole program. They provide the research data repository connecting all the data storages at the universities. They have one common search portal, which also links to international search portals, such as the one from SESTA, which is a European one. And also, they have the capacity and the knowledge, so they function as a knowledge hub for the whole network. And now we go to the exciting part. How does EFT fit in all of this? Well, we are very proud that EFT is actually the front runner here in Gothenburg, and maybe even in the whole of Sweden because we now have our own data access units at the University of Gothenburg. So what does this mean? This means that EFT researchers can publish their data at SND's repository. This also means that our data access unit is managed by our data managers at our um, EFT center in Ethiopia, ECRC. There will be quality control and data creation um, by our data managers at the ECRC and also at the end at SND. The storage and access will for now be uh, dealt with uh, at SND because the university doesn't have its own storage units at this moment. So we can actually use the storage capacity of directly at SND. So zooming into the development of the data access units, um, our progress so far in the last two years, what we started with was collaborating with our uh, center in Ethiopia, ECRC. We invested in human capacity by hiring a data manager who developed their own um, institutional repository. And with this experience and knowledge, we can already uh, lean a lot on this knowledge. Also, we had stakeholder meetings in the EFD network. This was to find, more, to find out more about attitudes and awareness vis-a-vis -vis data management, data sharing, and also to get some insight in the status quo of like, what are our centers doing in terms of data management. We are also developing our data management policy. And here we find it very important that these are aligned with international best practices and principles. So we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we want to align with what's already going on and the most professional organizations are doing. So we have adopted um, two guiding principles of our partner organizations, S&D. First is data should be as open as possible and as close as necessary. So this shows the importance of sharing the data to others, while at the same time the need to protect the privacy of respondents. And we also think our data should be fair, which means that data should be findable, it should be accessible, interoperable between different systems, and of course reusable by others. In the beginning of this year, we started collaborating with SND on the development of our data access units. And the central part in this was the training of two data managers, Samuel Ibera and Yabebel Ayalu. So they were invited to come over to Gothenburg for two weeks, and they were hosted by SND for a training program. Um, so what they learned here was basically how to manage the data access units, how does the system work, and how can they align their working processes with the routines, the working routines at SND. So they are now well prepared to work on the, at the data access unit and to take on the data. We're also implementing 
all these plans into EFT working processes. This means that data will be included in planning documents. This means that EFT data is mandatory as a deliverable for all research that is funded by EFT. And that means also that we have an enforcement system. That means that if researchers fail to submit their data from EFT funded research, this will limit their eligibility for further uh, funding from the EFT research funds. This is a little snapshot from our local university newspaper. This was about the two weeks training of our data managers at SND. It was quite a successful training. And this is a peak uh, preview how the data access unit looks like. It's an online system. These are the first uh, data sets from EFD. They're submitted through the system and they're currently being processed. They're uh, currently being curated and we hope that the first data sets will be pu published soon. This is how it would look like when data is actually published and accessible on SND websites. It's not an EFT data set yet um, because that's still in progress. This, this is another one from Sweden. It's an environmental survey. Um, but at least you get a, some insight of how it looks like. So to become more concrete, what do we actually ask from our researchers? Well, like I said before, first of all, sharing the primary data is a deliver deliverable for all EFT-funded research. Um, I would like also like to stress here that for other researchers, uh, other research by EFT researchers, you are also allowed, of course, to share your, your data in our system, and we also support this. Um, further, we require all uh, researchers to include a data management plan in uh, the proposals for the research funds. We also ask you to prepare your data de-identified, so it should not be, we should not be able to trace it back to individual persons. This is very important. And also the data should be properly labeled to enhance the, re, uh, the reuse of the data. And finally, you have to submit your, uh, the data to our data access units via the SND website in their deposition form. So we're asking these things, but of course we also have something to offer in return. First of all, we make your data citable. So each data set that will be published gets a DOI assigned to it. That means that anyone who uses your data and publish, publishes an article using this one will have to cite it as if it were um, uh, just a journal article, for example. So it will actually increase your citations. We also offer secure and long-term storage of your data. And this will be very structured and also in a way that it's easy uh, reusable. And this not only holds for other researchers to, to reuse it, but it can also be very beneficial for yourself if you want to use your data after seven years. Um, you have a very easy way to access it and reuse it. Of course, this also helps you in fulfilling journal requirements and sharing data. And all of this we support you by having skilled and training data managers that you can approach for assistance and help. We ask for quite a reasonable embargo time. And this is quite a sensitive topic, of course, because, of course, we want to publish all EFD data as soon as possible. But we understand that all researchers, they need some time to use the data, do your analysis, and um, write your article and publish it in the journal. So that's why we uh, put an embargo time of 36 months after the project starts to give you some time to actually work on your career. What we also do is we want to invest in upstream technology, such as survey tools. And this is supposed to make the whole process from preparing the data collection, collecting the data, towards um, preparing the data for analysis and also to publish it. It's supposed to make it all much easier and streamlined. And of course, by publishing our data, we also provide access to other EFD research, to data sets, to our researchers. So I'm now coming towards the end of my presentation, and I hope that you now have a much better understanding of what we are doing in terms of data management and data sharing. And I also hope that you understand why we're all doing this. Because the future of EFD is that we want to continue creating high quality and relevant research and want to make an actual impact on local policy making. And I want to note here that um, our initiative of sharing our data is not just a project on its own on its own, but it's actually an integral part of EFT's mission in doing so. But we cannot do this alone, so we need the commitment of all our researchers. 
and uh, be in, in them being a part of EFD's contribution to the common good. And that means that if you do your part, you share your data with us, then we will do our part in making data sharing as easy as possible, as convenient as possible, and also by providing professional um, data management support. So if we do this as a network, then together we can improve the transparency, the transparency and the reputation, both for, for researchers and the EFD network as a whole. And then we will also increase the visibility and of course the impact of our work. I would like to conclude here by citing this statement of the Center for Open Science, which I think perfectly summarizes the whole rationale of why we're doing this. The challenges of disease, poverty, education, social justice and the environment are too urgent to waste time on studies lacking rigor, outcomes that are never shared and results that are not reproducible. Thank you everyone. <clears throat>